Well, good morning, everybody. It is my very great pleasure to welcome you to the swearing in of Lord Sales as a Justice of the Court. It's a particular pleasure to welcome members uh, of Lord Sales' family, sitting behind him in the row normally reserved for, um, ad not always advocates, but anyway, legal representatives. Uh, so deem yourselves to be such for the time being, yes. Um, uh, Lord Sale's wife is here, his mother and father, his son, brother and sister, and other members of his family. You're all very welcome. It's also a pleasure to welcome the Lord Chancellor, uh, with Sir Richard Heaton, his permanent secretary, the Lord Chief Justice, and other senior members of the judiciary from the Royal Courts of Justice. Uh, the Attorney General and Solicitor General for England and Wales were planning to be here, but I suspect they may have a pressing business uh, across the square, which has detained them. Uh, but we're glad to see the Lord Advocate, members of the bar, and former justices. We're particularly delighted to see the former Lord Chancellor, Lord Irvin and Lady Irvin, um, here as well, and everyone else who has taken the trouble uh, to come today for this very special occasion. The ceremony you are about to witness is relatively simple. In fact, it's very simple, uh, but no less important for that. After some introductory words about the person to be sworn in, Lord Sales will be invited to come forward to take the oaths. These are required by law. First, the oath of allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen, and secondly, the judicial oath. Lord Sales then signs the oaths book so that there is a permanent record of the oaths that he has taken. He will then be robed in his gown and presented with his letters patent, recording his appointment by Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, he'll then be invited to take his seat on the bench. So first, a few words about Lord Sales. We are, as you know, striving to increase the diversity at the court along many dimensions. Lord Sales contributes in two ways, at least. First, he was educated at the Royal Grammar School, Guildford, thus bringing those of us who are educated in the grammar school system up to a quarter of the court. Uh, second, he obtained his first degree in the University of Cambridge, studying at Churchill College, uh, thus bringing those of us who are educated at the newer and less fashionable colleges uh, of Cambridge University, uh, those up the Huntingdon Road, uh, up to one quarter. After a first degree at Cambridge and a BCL at Worcester College, Oxford, uh, he was called to the bar by Lincoln's Inn in 1985. He joined chambers at 11 King's Bench Walk, where the future Lord Chancellor, Derry Irvin, uh, was a, a more senior member. A more junior member, one Tony Blair, also became quite famous in later years. Uh, in 1987, when Tony Blair became Prime Minister and Derry Irvin became Lord Chancellor, Philip Sales was appointed uh, first uh, Treasury Council Common Law, otherwise known as the Treasury Devil, a hugely important role, leading for the United Kingdom government in the most important public law cases. According to the Times, his appointment caused consternation among senior lawyers at the time because he was so young, only 35, uh, which in my book certainly counts as young. Uh, but if uh, there was such consternation, it was short-lived because he was so good. I first experienced his quality when we were both taking part in the mammoth exercise training the whole of the judiciary in the Human Rights Act, which Lord Irvin had steered through the House of Lords. Uh, because of his experience in European Union law, Philip Sales was thoroughly versed in the techniques of interpreting UK legislation so as to be compatible with EU law techniques that we had to learn to apply to the European Convention on Human Rights under Section 3 of the Human Rights Act. He was extremely good at training us in that. In 2004, he appeared for the government in the leading case of Gaidan and Godin Mendoza and successfully persuaded the House of Lords that living together as husband and wife could be interpreted to include a same-sex couple in a marriage-like relationship, that being the leading case on Section 3 of the Human Rights Act. He was obviously destined for great things, becoming a High Court judge in 2008, assigned to the Chancery Division, which is testament to his versatility, as public law had previously been his main speciality. He was promoted to the Court of Appeal in 2014, 
And in 2016, he had the dubious privilege of joining the Lord Chief Justice and Master of the Rolls in the Divisional Court to hear the case brought by Gina Miller, challenging the use of the royal prerogative without parliamentary authority to bring us out of the European Union. Their judgment was a model of constitutional principle, unfairly vilified by some sections of the press, but triumphantly upheld in this court. It was obviously only a matter of time before he would be appointed a justice of this court. At the remarkably young age of, I think, 56? But this time, there seems not to have been such consternation as there was when you were appointed Treasury Devil, which is tribute, of course, to the quality of what he has done over the last 20 years. And indeed, I believe that Lord Sales is a few months older than was Lord Reed when Lord Reed uh, was appointed a justice of this court. So that's some record you do not have. <laughs> he lists his recreations in Who's Who as theater, film, and reading, but I happen to know that he's also a practitioner of the sport of ultimate frisbee on Sunday mornings in his local park. Surely a way to keep himself thoroughly grounded when he is not engrossed in points of law of general public importance. So, Lord Sales, I now invite you to take the oaths. I, Philip James Sales, do solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. I, Philip James Sales, do solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that I will well and truly serve our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth II in the office of a Justice of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom, and I will do right to all manner of people after the laws and usages of this realm without fear or favour, affection or ill will. I now invite you to sign the oaths book. Thank you. And I have great pleasure in presenting you with your letters patent. And I now invite you to take your seat on the bench of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom as Lord Sales. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you got your instructions right. <laughs> concludes our ceremony. Thank you all so much for coming today and for your attention. It's a significant day for Lord Sales and for the whole court. That is why it's important to have you here and for our proceedings to be live streamed and available for later viewing. It's all part of our commitment to open justice. The justices will now process out of the courtroom to the lobby for a formal photograph. Uh, so please bear with us while that happens. We will try and make the photographer as quick as possible. Uh, but as you, many of you know, this is not always an easy task. But we'll do our best, and then we'll let you go. <laughs> Thank you. The court will now adjourn. <laughs>